Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Perhaps Pope Benedict is a lot smarter and more clever than he is being given credit for by the secular media and much of his opposition in the church. As we reported last week, a blockbuster report was released by a priest from Poland detailing a homosexual underground among Catholic priests and bishops that has helped ruin the church in much of the West. Media reports began emerging late last week from the Italian press that the Pope was handed a secret report in December prepared by three cardinals in response to the so-called VatiLeak scandal from last spring. According to some of those media reports, one alleged particular damning piece of information in the overall 300 pages of their report is the existence of a number of homosexual cardinals who are being blackmailed. Now, news from Scotland today is that the Cardinal of Edinburgh, Keith O'Brien, has resigned his post and will not attend or vote in the conclave following publication of accusations from priests and former seminarians that he sexually abused them decades ago. The Vatican has confirmed that he has handed in his resignation to Pope Benedict and he will vacate his office and will not be in the conclave. This intensifies the heat of the white hot spotlight on Los Angeles' former Cardinal Roger Mahoney now, who was recently implicated in a massive cover-up of hundreds of sex abuse cases which he hid from the public for years. Will he too have to step aside for his involvement? There's an online petition actually asking that he do that that has over 10,000 signatures alone right now. One would think that question will now take on an added sense of urgency. True, he has never been accused of actual abuse himself, but to the minds of many, the cover-up had just as evil a tint to it as did the abuse itself. As the average Catholic now surveys the lay of the land, what does he or she see? In short, the beginning of the dismantling of the homosexual underground in the Catholic clergy, because it's now being revealed. There are, they are at last being dragged out into the light to the shock of some Catholics who up to this point have been left in the dark and to the thankfulness of many others who have known about this or suspected it or kept sort of stumbling across it for years and are now saying, thank you God that this is finally being exposed. Think about the events of the past few days. Cardinal Roger Mahoney taken to task by his successor for his role in covering up sex abuse cases. Another cardinal has now resigned following allegations by four of his former clerics slash seminarians that he sexually abused them. A report from a priest in Poland commissioned at the request of bishops and priests and some cardinals to get to the bottom of a homosexual infiltration in the church in Poland. And on top of it all, Italian press reports that include allegations of the existence of a ring of homosexual cardinals in the Vatican itself who are open to blackmail. This is nothing less than an astounding turn of events. And on top of it all, for the first time in over 600 years, the Pope resigns. He said in his resignation announcement that he was, in short, simply too old and too tired to continue with the daily duties of his office. It can hardly be denied now, in light of all of this, that one of the big struggles the Pope has had to deal with has been the issue of disobedient and uncooperative bishops and even cardinals who are either homosexual themselves or involved in a cover-up of that homosexual network or, at the bare minimum, covering up sex abuse cases. This whole mess is almost beyond belief. Until you understand the degree of infiltration and effectiveness of this network of homosexual prelates and clergy reaching all the way into the Vatican itself. While we were in Rome on a recent trip, we had some private meetings with various church officials, and in those meetings we were slightly astonished to hear it admitted that the homosexual underground, get this now, that the homosexual underground in the church was so powerful, is so powerful, that many in Rome don't even understand how it operates. It is entirely plausible that Pope Benedict not only retired in view of all of this and much more, but also in view of the internal report handed to him, plus his own personal awareness of the homosexual infiltration into the higher ranks of the clergy from the lower ranks, 
Benedict may have just ripped the rug out from under all his opposition. In light of all of this, Pope Benedict's resignation for the good of the church has now taken on a near apocalyptic proportion. Big, big change is coming to the church, and the path for that change has been cleared by the humility of an aging pope, weary from battle, who loves the church so intensely that he has put down his sword so a younger man may pick it up. We need to pray an intense prayer first of gratitude to the Holy Spirit for our beloved Holy Father, Pope Benedict, for his immense sacrifice born of love, and that the next man who steps into the shoes of the fishermen will have as intense a love of the faith and be willing to do battle and fight the enemies of Christ inside the church. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Sick of TV and its cultural rot? Tune in to churchmilitant.tv and become a premium subscriber where you will get access to fresh shows with solid church doctrine. As a premium subscriber, you'll get hundreds of hours of programming, which includes investigative shows, catechesis, apologetics, church history lessons, and a lot more. What are you waiting for? Forget the bad television and dive into the riches of the Catholic faith for only $10 a month.